Football presented by Kyocera as the USC Trojans make a house call on the 11th ranked hometown Washington Huskies. And hello again, everybody. I'm Barry Tompkins. We welcome you to Husky Stadium. Already the crowd is into this game. Huskies come in here undefeated and coming off a come from behind victory. USC comes in here licking its wounds a little bit. Trojans only one up and three down and playing in one of the most difficult places in the Pac-10 Conference to play football in. It's the Trojans and the 11th ranked Huskies. Huskies looking for a little bit of help. Trojans looking for even more help. Huskies will get it from the hometown crowd. Always a factor here in Seattle. And the Huskies now making their way through the tunnel. They will come on to the field. Crowd acknowledges them now. Here come the Huskies. Well, we talk about how tough it is to play at Husky Stadium. Nobody knows that more than my partner, Warren Moon. He played here back in 1977. This touchdown pass, the weather is always a factor, but the biggest factor is the crowd. Warren, of course, went on to be named to the Canadian Football Hall of Fame, soon to follow for his career in the NFL, I'm sure, another Hall of Fame. Warren, first of all, congratulations on that. And nobody can speak more to the fact that this is a very difficult place for a visiting team than you can. Is there any way you can describe what it's like on the field with all that sound filtering down? Barry, it is a very intimidating place to play. Not only do you have 70 plus thousand people screaming their heads off, this place has an overhang on both sides that hangs over the crowd. So that noise not only comes down, but goes back up and comes back down on the players. So it's very suffocating and it can be very intimidating. You have the the elements that are always a problem here, and then you're contending with a very good football team, too. So it's a very tough place to win. Well, the Huskies came back last week on the road. 23 first-year players made their very first road trip last week. They had to come back from 11 points down. They did it by going back to basics. Smash mouth football. That's what Washington likes to do. I think we can look for more of that today, and they got a bigger deck to do it with. Exactly. They, they've been very injury riddled at that position, but now they're back to full strength. And Willie Hurst is going to be back in the lineup. He's their senior co-captain a very inspirational player and can make big plays for him. Also, Rich Alexis, who is their leading ground gainer right now, he's back, he's in the lineup. He's a guy that can not only run inside, but he can take it to the outside and make the big play for you. So that's what they want to do. They really want to smash you with that football. And USC looking to make the big play, too. Now, when you used to think about USC, you used to think about the big play coming from the tailback. Not so anymore. It's got to come from the quarterback. It's got to come from Carson Palmer, and Carson's got to play better. If you look at his numbers, he's got two touchdown passes and six interceptions. He's got to make better decisions for this team to win but they also have to run the ball better in order to take a little bit of pressure off him. Well, there's another portion of this game that I feel is going to be very important, too. With more on that, let's meet the third member of our broadcast team down amongst the maddening crowd, another ex-Trojan, John Jackson. J.J.? Yeah, that's right, Barry. Usually at the top of the shows, we're always talking offense or defense, but at the University of Washington, they talk special teams, and they have probably the best special teams in the nation right now statistically. They lead the nation in kickoff return, first in the Pac-10 in punt returns. John McLaughlin, Derek McLaughlin, their punter, leads the Pac-10, and they also get it done with blocked field goals against Michigan. Omar Lowe comes in, makes that block, and then their big play player, Rock Alexander, scoops that ball up and drives it for a touchdown. That turned the game around for the Huskies. That's how they've got off to this 3-0 start, Barry. And I tell you, if you're the USC Trojans, you know all about the big play players for Washington. You have to come up with some answers, and it has to be on special teams. Back to you, Barry. All right, thanks very much. I think special teams are going to be a big part of this football game. Big plays are going to be a big part of this football game. It's the Trojans and the Huskies. We talked to the quarterbacks. We talked to the running backs. Rich Alexis, just a sophomore. Sultan McCullough needs to give Carson Palmer some help. If he runs well, Palmer might pass well. Washington won the toss and deferred. John Anderson will kick it away, and he will be kicking to Darrell Rideau and Kevin Arbett. Arbett to the near side, Rideau to the far side. Anderson comes forward, kicks it away. End over end kick, Rideau about two yards deep, he'll try it. Bounces it outside and runs right into a man at the nine yard line. Rod Glenn, Roderick Green was right there. Here are the lineups brought to you by Kyocera. Carson Palmer going to be the quarterback, and he's going to have to go 91 yards. Field position very important in this game. Palmer's got to reverse those numbers. Rodgers, Mailo, Katnick getting a start at the center position. Wilson and Torres, it is a young USC offensive line. And the skill position, Sultan McCullough 
with Charlie Landry again, an underrated fullback. Colbert Kelly and Dickerson. Dickerson the tight end. Colbert and Kelly the wideouts. Both teams want to establish the run. And here's McCullough. McCullough gets a little gap and gets it up across the 15-yard line to the 16. Defensively, the Washington Huskies look like this. Marcus Roberson with Larry Triplett, an ace on the nose. Jerome Stevens at the tackle spot. Zach Tuyasasoko, a familiar name here in Washington. His brother Marcus, the quarterback, getting his first start. Madavi Willis and Blanche also getting his first start. So two of the linebackers with their first starts. An experienced secondary on both sides of the field. McCullough again, short of the first down. Stevens on the stop. Well, you can see here, Barry, that USC Trojans have come out and they're trying to establish the run. They're trying to get McCullough involved in the ball game earlier, which they need to do, and that'll take some pressure off of Carson Palmer, who's had to exclusively pass most of their first four ball games. It's going to be third down and a long yard. And then Dickerson flop him from right to left. Palmer's going to go up on third and short. Throws and knocked away nicely and caught. I thought he got a hand on it, but he didn't, and the ball was caught beautifully that time by Kerry Colbert. But right through the hands, it looked like of Amari Lowe. Very nice throw on the run by Carson Palmer, and he just gets that ball in there, and, and Colbert makes a very good catch on the ball, getting his feet in bounds and getting enough for the first down. Low took a swat at it, just didn't get it. Very good coverage by Low, but it looked like from here he did knock that ball down. First down at the 23 yard line. Give it to McCullough again. McCullough inside. Got it to about the 26 yard line. Need him about three. Watch for the Husky defensive line today to stem around a little bit, move around on the line of scrimmage and try and give this young, inexperienced USC line different looks. Here's what uh, the Trojans have done rushing the football, and uh, it's gone from pretty good to, against San Jose to dreadful against Stanford. The Cardinal just did not allow McCullough to get started. Doing a little better at the start here today. Bounces it outside into the open for a moment, and another first down at the 39-yard line. So the Trojans right now Establishing some credibility on the ground. Chris Massey made the stop. Very, it's a very nice inside trap play. Nice kick out block. You see right there, and McCullough makes a good job of, of cutting back inside and breaking a couple of tackles and heading straight upfield. He's a guy that said, coming into this ball game, he's got to make some big yards in order for this team to win. Jacob Rogers, who made that block, he's picked up. First down. McCullough again. This time he's really cracked. Still managed to get his shoulders going forward, though, and picked up about three yards. Well, this looks like this looks like vintage SC football now, handing the ball off to the tailback exclusively. But here he comes up, and takes a nice pop there from the safety man. But he still, like you said, falls forward for yards. Greg Carruthers has been a big hitter thus far for the Huskies this year and in the last year. And they feel like he's going to have a, a great, outstanding career by the time he's finished here at the University of Washington. Second down and six. Trojans have only put it up once. Give it to McCullough again. And McCullough head down to the 45-yard line. Got about two. Larry Triplett in the middle. Jammed that up pretty good. It's going to be third down and four. Crowd here uh, equipped with uh, those little tube things that they uh, wave back and forth that can be uh, very distracting actually. You well, might want to keep an eye on the Larry Triplett uh, matchup against Norm Katnick. Uh, Norm Katnick's very inexperienced on their line. He plays a lot of different positions, but they feel like they can expose this matchup between Larry Triplett and All-American. Palmer straight back over the middle, caught in traffic that time by Alex Holmes, a tight end. And that's going to be enough for another Trojan first down. Madavi was defending, but uh, Palmer drilled that ball right in there. 
That's one of the things about Palmer is he, he has so much confidence he will uh, sometimes throw it into coverage. Well, I like what Norm Chow, their offensive coordinator, is doing right now. They're getting the running game established and letting Carson throw intermediate, high percentage passes, which will get him more confidence as the game goes along. So first down, just across midfield. McCullough again gets a little gap and gets down to the 46-yard line. Get a four. That's good first down yardage. Madavi on the tackle again. What this drive is doing, Barry, it's not only establishing the line of scrimmage for the Trojans, but it's also taking this crowd out of the game as you go along with a sustained drive like this. Seven carries now from McCullough. Six up right up the middle, Warren. They've run it exclusively to this left side, but they're getting good cutbacks up the middle, and I think they've exploited something on this left side of, of their offensive line, the right side of the Husky defense, where Marcus Roberson and uh, Badavia are over there playing linebacker. All on blitz this time. Now Palmer rolling. He'll run, and he'll manage to get about a yard after all is said and done. Wanda Davis on the stop for the Huskies. Huskies came with everybody that time. That'll be third down and a long four. Carson Palmer not only has the big gun as far as being able to throw the football, but he can also run the football, as you saw right there. And he, he is not a guy that will hesitate. He will take off and run whenever he gets the opportunity. Ten play drive thus far, eating up just about five minutes of the clock. This the 11th play coming, and it's a big one. Third down and four. Catch by Holmes. First down and more inside the 25-yard line. Well, they are really clicking right now. Nice job by Alex Holmes. Runs a nice little out route on Carruthers. Beautifully thrown football right on the numbers. Gives them a chance to turn up the field and run and get extra yards after the catch. And the Huskies were in man coverage on this play. If he breaks that tackle, he's got a chance to go all the way. Carruthers with the saving tackle. Palmer now three of three, all on third downs. There's a gift to McCullough again. Kind of gets it down on the 20 yard line. They're getting excellent first down yardage. That's a big thing. Big thing. You know, you always want to try and put yourself in second and medium situations if you possibly can in third and short situations. That way you can dictate offensively what you want to do with your play calling. And right now they're having great success no! on first down. And that's the reason why this drive is, has been so lengthy and been so sustained. Second down and five. Come again, right up the gut again. He got about three more. This is all really setting up well for a play action pass, too. It really is, but again, like I said, with this young offensive line, they want to establish the line of scrimmage, and that's something they haven't been able to do the last two ball games. And they know they have to do that in order to, to win on the road here at the University of Washington is establish the line of scrimmage and get this crowd out of the game because once this crowd gets going. This team seems to play at another level. Yeah, and the crowd responds to defense here, too. They really do. Well, they've eaten about six minutes of the clock. It's been a very effective drive. McCullough this time tries to bounce it back. Going to be stopped short of the first down, I believe. Now, the Trojans are saying it is a first down. But it depend, depend on the spot. Jerome Stevens made the tackle for Washington. And I think they're going to mark this a little bit short. It might require a measurement. It does look a little short from here. Of course, from here is another area code. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and it is that close. So good eyes I have from here. Man. Yeah, you're not kidding. <laughs> it's because you played here. You know the turf. There's Pete Carroll. Pete uh, really hungry for a win. He said that his only emotion after the loss last week to Stanford was uh, was anger. He was just very upset with his team. And they did self-destruct. That has been a problem for the USC Trojans. They've had crucial penalties. Happened to, the get, to them again last week against Stanford. So it's going to be fourth down and less than a yard. Matter of fact, just a matter of inches for the USC Trojans, who took the ball at their own nine-yard line following the opening kickoff. They have now moved it just short 
of the 15. That's where they need to get. I'm a little surprised they're going for it here right now, but they have confidence in a run game. Palmer on the sleep? I don't think so. Unless they reward second effort. He got there with a second effort, and he may get a generous spot. I don't think so, Ben. From the far side referee right now, the line judge is saying his, his mark is short of the first down from what I see right here. Washington's football. That was a huge play early in this game. A huge play in this ball game and a very daring call by Madabi did a great job coming over the pile and got a hand on the jersey of Carson Palmer. Huskies will have it when we come back. Huskies have it now at the 15-yard line. And that is Hurst into the ball game as a starter after not having played a week ago in California. And he picks up about seven on first down. They really missed Willie Hurst last week because he's a guy that's an inspirational guy, really plays hard. They really look up to him as a captain. And as you saw there, those twisting moves, he makes some very exciting runs. Here's the Washington offense brought to you by Kiyosara. Cody Pickett is the quarterback. We'll tell you the rest of them as soon as this play is over. Pickett checking off here on second down and three. Pickett going to throw. Short drop. Floats it out there. Caught by Williams, but out of bounds. That'll be no catch. Here's the offensive line for the Huskies. Barnes, Newton, Ben, the only real experience on the offensive line. Zajac and Bakker. Skill position people. Willie Hurst gets a start. Ken Walker getting a start at fullback ahead of Matthias Wilson. Reggie Williams, just a freshman. Paul Arnold, converted running back, doing a great job. Joe Kyer playing for the injured Jeremy Stevenson, tight end. Third down, and three for the Huskies. Look at the throw, in trouble. And a comebacker for Arnold, first down the 33-yard line. But kick and hung in there, because he was under siege. He really did, did a great job in the pocket. Of moving his feet, keeping his rhythm, keeping his feet up under him, and delivered a nice ball to Far Arnold. Very young USC defensive line. Kenichi Udizi, a freshman, shot Cody, a freshman, with Riley and Ford. The backers, Frank Strong, converted running back, Mike Pollard, and Chris Prosser. The secondary, clearly the strength of the Trojans. Richard Simmons, Polamalu, and Cash. Give this time is to Hurst again. Hurst moves the pile across the 35. Sean Cody, the freshman, first man to it. Cody Pinkett made big strides last week in bringing his team from behind against California. It really boosted his confidence and, and let him know that he can play on this level because until you actually do something like that in a big ball game, you really aren't sure about your abilities. Bring Arnold to the outside, three, three wide receivers and two setbacks. And this is a, a set that Huskies have not shown in a couple of years. Here's the option, and pick it on the keeper to the 40, close to a first down. Pollard makes the stop. They strung USC out defensively. Yeah, that was the set offensive coordinator Keith Gilbertson talked about yesterday. They hadn't shown this year. Three wide receivers, two backs, and here they run the option to the weak side of it. But he tips the ball inside, takes it, turns up field, and makes a nice little gain right there before he's finally tackled on the play by number 45, Mike Pollard. That was actually a triple option, which we haven't seen run too much up here, because that's that dive to the fullback first. Exactly, and uh, it's something that they're going to show, I'm sure, throughout the ball game, just to see how USC is going to try and defend it. Hurst gets a break, gets across midfield to the 49-yard line. Both teams able to run early in this game. And the current winning streaks, Oklahoma at 17, Washington right there at 11. Maybe this is the day of the upsets. Here's the option pitch this time. And Hurst could get started, actually slipped and fell, and has dropped for a loss of a couple. Well, USC does a great job of stringing that option out. They really had nowhere to pitch the football. Mike Pollard was out there along with Chris Prosser, and Cody could, probably should have tucked that ball up and try, just tried to make something happen as opposed to pitching it off and getting a loss. I 
process of shuffling people in and out of the Washington lineup with some regularity here. He shuffles his wideouts a lot. Three wideouts in the game right now. They also can slot inside of Hooks. Straight back, pick it, throws. Too tall for Hooks. He had him, threw it a little bit too high. And a flag is down back at the line of scrimmage. against the Huskies. It was illegal formation, I believe, was the call. Illegal shift on the offense. That penalty's declined before it down. So the dogs will have to give it up as uh, both teams able to move the football on the ground, but both teams coming up empty in their first series. Arbett going to be the deep man to receive the punt of Derek McLaughlin. See the average on McLaughlin, although I've always thought that's a very misleading number. This early in the season, he had a 74-yarder last week, and I'm sure that boosted that average up a little bit. Right? Yeah. Angles this one away from Arbett. That's a pretty good punt. He hits it about the 17. It goes out of bounds at about the 12-yard line. That's, that's pretty darn good. And we'll take a timeout, 428 remaining, first quarter. Look at the scoreboard, shows the Huskies nothing and the Trojans nothing. <laughs> Trojans start at their own 13-yard line. They moved the ball well the last time. McCullough, pretty good first down yardage. Again, they've been averaging five yards on first down, and that's a real key in any ball game. Their last drive, their first drive of the game, was a very impressive drive. It was 15 plays, 7 minutes, 75 yards, but then you come up with no points out of that drive. That's kind of demoralizing for your confidence, especially for a team that's been struggling offensively, and you're on the road. You want to get something on the board on the road as early as you possibly can. That time, the Huskies took that cutback away, so we'll see what kind of adjustments they made. Four yards on first down. It'll be second and six. Give it to McCullough again. McCullough right up the gut to the 20 yard line and a flag down. Somebody might have lined up in the neutral zone. Nope, false start against the Trojans. The Trojans really have shot themselves in the foot this year when it comes to penalties. Penalties have killed them, especially the last couple of ball games. Where especially in crucial times in the ball game, like having to win the game in the last drive, there's a penalty here, a penalty there that stops the drive or, or gives the, the other team another chance to move the chains. Those are things you can't do, and that's why in these close ball games, you definitely want to stay penalty free. The discussion amongst the officials here, that's the reason for this momentary delay. There's no penalty. There's no penalty. The worst seven men on the line as required by rule. So it was a just kidding penalty. <laughs> Third down. I guess they're allowed to make a mistake every now and then. What it all means is it's going to be third down and three now for the Trojans. Now, third and short has been a passing down for USC thus far in this game. Right. Their pattern has been run, run, pass as opposed to the pass, pass, run they've usually been doing. Said Kelly to the far side, then Colbert to the near side. And they are formation. Fumble on the snap, and I believe, let's see, I think the Huskies have it. They do at the 18 yard line. And hello, crowd. And you've been in this situation, Warren. Defense gearing the crowd. I think that was Ben Madavi making another big play, recovering that fumble snap by Carson Palmer. Looks like Carson might have come out of there a little bit too early, didn't get the snap, and you see Madavi on the ball quickly as possible, and that's a big turnover down here in Husky territory. And remember Rick Neuheisel telling us yesterday that it's defense that triggers this crowd, a big defensive play. That's exactly what happened. So the Trojans have allowed this Husky crowd back into the ball game, and they're in business at the 19-yard line. This time it's the keeper with Pickett on a great fake. 
and Pickett will take it down to the seven yard line. What a great fake that was. Wow, he had me on that one. <laughs> they faked the dive to Hurst. Watch this. Great job of faking the dive to Hurst. Everybody converged on it. Pickett gets around that corner as quickly as possible. Takes a nice shot on the sideline, but nice game first down. Crosser and Polamalu finally run him down, but it's first and goal. Huskies at the seven yard line. Straight ahead, this time on the pitch to Hurst. And now Hurst tries to turn it upfield, slips and falls at the 12. Hurst lined up on the wing that time. So a little bit of a different look to the option. They're coming with the option from a lot of different looks, and Pickett that time comes down. He's taken away, so he pitches the ball, but SC does a great job of, of stringing that one out again. Oh, you see him kind of step back from the wing position, like you said. He tries to make something out of nothing, but there's a lot of USC defenders around the football. So to the second and goal from the 12-yard line now. Good defensive job by USC that time. Three wideouts, single setback. Pick and checking off. Short drop. Throws underneath. Caught by Arnold at the 10. Arnold trying to get outside. Gets to about the 8-yard line. Maybe got to the 7. The original line of scrimmage. It'll be third and goal. Cash and Pulamalo running down. This is what we used to call a smash route where you send the slot receiver to the corner and then the wide receiver Arnold comes underneath and he gets the pass from Pickett and tries to make something happen with it. Puts the ball right on his numbers. Nice delivery. Arnold has been a great receiver for them thus far this year after converting over from running back last year. Limping off the field for USC. Looks like Bernard Riley. And that would be a big loss for them. They're already very inexperienced up front. Bernard Riley's one of their leading tacklers, and that's unusual for a guy on the inside, but he's a very active big guy, and like you said, that would be a great loss for them if he can't come back in the ball game. But I think he'll be able to lift that one off. And he's replaced by Mike Patterson, a true freshman, playing alongside Kenichi Udizi, who is a true freshman, and Sean Cody, who is a true freshman. <laughs> That's inexperience. Very young up in the front, but very talented. Third down and goal from the seven-yard line. Pickett straight back with time over the middle. Caught by Elstrup. Touchdown. Gunned that one, partner. That was reminiscent of, of you. He really did. I, I wasn't sure if that was where he was going because I saw the tight end in the back of the end zone. I thought maybe he was going to the tight end, but he came to Elstrom and he makes the nice grab in the end zone. He did put something on that ball. So Anderson to try to add the extra point. Which he does, and it is a 7 0 ball game with one minute, 35 seconds remaining to be played in the first quarter. Trojans had it all going, came up empty, and the dogs have taken over. Washington scoring drive, four plays, 20 yards. Only took a minute and 47 seconds, and again, capitalizing on a turnover. Well, I thought he was going to Joe Collier back here in the back of the end zone, but what happens is, Elstrom comes underneath right into this area and he's and he's trying to find a little hole in there. Joe Collier's all over it, but he makes a nice high throw and comes up with the completion for the touchdown. That's a pass I don't know if I would have thrown if I was in the ball game, but he somehow got it in there. Kickoff headed for Rideau at the four yard line. Rideau got a little gap, gets to the 25. Sam Cunningham, no relation to the former USC running back. Making the stop. And here are the fans at Husky Stadium. And, uh, they're jacked up, and why not? Their team capitalizing on a turnover. They've had seven turnovers. They have been, gotten seven turnovers and only turned the ball over seven, two, time, two times themselves. And that's really a big difference. USC just about the opposite of that. Right, the Huskies lead the nation in turnover margin. They've only had two turnovers, like you said, in their first three ball games. The 
Cutler this time stopped right at the line of scrimmage. There's Riley uh, walking off the field. Perhaps uh, in X ready he appears to be okay. Pottle going to throw. Throws for Kelly, makes the catch the 41 yard line. Biggest gain of the day for the Trojans. Omari Lowe defending, but Kareem Kelly picks up 16. That, that's the advantage of those, that running game early in the ball game. They go play action this time and a nice little seam post to Kareem Kelly, who the ball's a little behind him, but he turns his body in the air and makes the acrobatic catch. These are, these are the kind of plays that Carson Palmer has to have made for him by his receivers so he can increase his confidence. Trojan's very capable of making big plays. They're a big play team. Lots of speed. Palmer will go up again. Five-step drop. Looking for it all. Looks for Colbert. Too long. But I think we're going to get a hold on Washington. I'm not sure if it would be interference or a hold. I think he had a grab on him. That is Chris Massey before the ball was in the air. So we'll see if it's interference or holding. But I know it's going against the Huskies. Interference. It looked like Massey ran a little stutter and go pattern, and as he stuttered and went to take off, Massey kind of grabbed him to slow him down a little bit, and he got Not caught. Interference on the defense. The ball be placed at the spot of the foul. First down. I'm wondering why Rock Alexander isn't in the ball game. The last series he wasn't in. And this series he's not in with Massey over on that corner spot. Matt Castle is the quarterback now. Now check that Palmer is the quarterback still. Give it to McCullough. McCullough gets the outside and gets it to the 32 yard line. Castle was in the game actually as a receiver, not at the quarterback position. Well, Greg Brothers makes a uh, touchdown saving tackle on that particular play because. Zoltan McCullough is the fastest player to ever wear a USC uniform. He runs a 10.1700 meters. If he would have got around that corner, it was bye-bye. There's so much speed on this USC team. At least three state sprint champions in California on this football team. McCullough again has some room. Gets the 25-yard line. And about six. Eric Torres leading the way for him. Good blocking up front from a sophomore from Gardena. And with that, we come to the end of the first quarter. And it was a quarter in which USC really has dominated offensively. Nonetheless, they trail on the scoreboard. It's the Washington Husky 7, the USC Trojans, nothing. End of the first period. Welcome back to Husky Stadium. Beautiful sight here. And as you look out of Lake Washington, and uh, a new kind of tailgating here on days like this. 7 0, the Huskies lead. That may be the only statistic that, that they lead in, but it is also the most important statistic as we start the second quarter. Trojans at the 25 yard line. Castle again into the wide receiver spot. They give this time to McCullough. McCullough spins to the 21. Let's go to the sidelines right now. John Jackson. JJ, what's up? Well, Barry, with the injury to Bernard Riley, the nose tackle, he went in to get taped. He has a sprained knee. Taking his place will be Mike Patterson, number 99. It will be his first action as a Trojan. The freshman out of Los Altos has to come up big for the Trojans. Back to you, Barry. All right, thanks very much, JJ. McCullough now 16 carries, 74 yards. And uh, that really says something about what USC is trying to do. 22 plays in the first quarter, Warren, 117 yards for USC. For Washington, 12 plays for 53 yards, but the most important thing is they lead. Exactly. Turnovers, turnovers. You can't turn the ball over, especially on the road. They're going to get burned every time. First down, Trojans. Palmer to throw. Looks and has a man and walking into the end zone. The fullback, Charlie Landrigan. And this game is just about tied. Landrigan was wide open. Nice play action pass again. Set up off the run. Play action pass to Sultan McCullen. Fullback gets up underneath the linebacker. You see right there. Nobody back there. They're in man coverage. Walks into the end zone. Touchdown. There was a flag, but it's against the Huskies. Touchdown counts. Half the distance on the extra point. 
Boy, there is a cheap shot right there. Jamon Willis coming late and hit Carson Palmer right below the waist. I think that was Jamon Willis's man <laughs> that scored that touchdown. Might have been. So he compounded the error. Davis to try the extra point now. Which would make this a tie game. And just like that, we're tied at seven. Just 35 seconds into the second quarter. It's the Trojan seven, the Husky seven. We're coming back to Husky Stadium right after this. Some Trojan fans have uh, made the trek north from Los Angeles here to Seattle. They also brought the band. They also brought the cheerleaders, and they got to be liking what they're seeing so far. Well, when you can be tied on the road like this in a very hostile environment, it's a plus. Short kick this time from Zach Sherwood. And it's returned that time by Rock Alexander to about the 20 yard line. So he got away with a short kick. It will give the Huskies a long field. Carson Palmer has really come out in this game and looked very sharp here. A little throw on the run here to Colbert. Gets the first down. Again, looks down the field. Nice little pass here to his tight end, Holmes. He makes a big play after the catch. And here the play action pass where he goes to Charlie Landrigan. Walks in the end zone. Touchdown. Carson Palmer is 5 for 5 for 67 yards. Take away that. So now it's Cody Pickett's turn. They gave him first down to Alexis, and he didn't get any. Trojans fired up right now, playing pretty well. A lot of Trojans around the football in that particular play. That shows what a touchdown can do for you. Mike Patterson makes the play. The freshman that just came in with the injured uh, Willis. Make that Riley. And again, Huskies shuffling, particularly wide receivers, in and out of the ball game. You know, they're very deep at this position, even though they're they're young there, they have a lot of talent. They want to get these guys in the field as much as they possibly can. Three wideouts in the ballgame now. They're the slot right. Here's the option again. And the pitch this time to Alexis and a terrific defensive play that time by Cash. Chris Cash just was not going to be fooled. Chris Cash did a great job of him. Here the option comes down the left side. Cody really strings it out as long as he possibly can, then gives the pitch to Alexis. But Cash does a great job of avoiding the, the block of the defense of the offensive receiver and makes the tackle. Nice sure tackle by Cash on that play. So it'll be third down and long, third and six now. Pickett directing a little bit of traffic here. Learning on the job is Cody Pickett. Blitz comes from the outside. Pickett throws. Caught by it. Arnold and Arnold will have a first down at the 39 yard line. Got a little bit more out of it. That's that extra effort as a former running back getting those extra yards after the catch. Now Arnold is really a big play guy. Came here as a very heralded recruit. Returned to kick off 100 yards in his freshman year. Run, does a great job of driving off the defensive back number 42, Chris Richard. Nice curl, ball delivered right on the money, and he, he's a very tough guy to bring down after the catch because of his running back ability. Pickett making big plays on third down. 39-yard line, straight back. Pickett will throw on first down, and the ball is caught on a very nice catch and a terrific throw that time. Wilbur Hooks makes the catch, but I think he got to credit Pickett with that throw. You really do. We call this play like a fade stop where you... you you're running man for man, bump and run with the defensive back, and you throw the ball at the receiver's back shoulder, and at the last second, the receiver turns back and makes the play. It's a very hard play to uh, to complete, but if you work on it enough, it becomes a very effective play in the passing game. Very tough for the defense to stop. I thought Pickett threw it only where his guy could get it, too. So the ball just across midfield now. Like he's checking off here. Yeah. Done that quite a lot today. Short drop this time. Pickett floats it out here for Elston. Elston can't hang on. Nice adjustment defensively that time by the Trojans. That's the second time that Pickett has checked off to that same play. Second and ten now. Pickett gives to Alexis, and Alexis slips the first man, but will be stopped after a gain only of about three. 
both quarterbacks, I think, doing a pretty good job so far, Warren. They really are. I think the big difference is uh, Carson came up short on the fourth down play and then also the fumble. Those are the two things that have really hurt this Trojan football team. Otherwise, they've outplayed the Huskies offensively, but both quarterbacks have been very sharp today. Three wideouts and a single setback, and pick it again, directing a little traffic on third down. Come with a late blitz, Pickett throws. That was that same comebacker, but that time, I think Pickett thought that Reddick was going to do a stop and go. He didn't do that. Yeah, it looked like a little miscommunication there where Cody threw the ball inside. The receiver stayed outside, and Cody's had something to say to him right after the play was over. I'm sure they'll talk about that on the sideline. He might have been held a little bit, might too. Might have been held a little bit. The official probably thought he didn't have a chance to get that football. So McLaughlin will do the punting, as you see, a record 74-yarder last week when they really needed it. It was from his own one-yard line. And there was a 15-yard penalty on top of that against California. Kevin Arbett, the deep man at the 13-yard line. And he stopped at the 50. McLaughlin's two punts have both been inside the 20-yard line, and that's what a punter tries to do. So the Trojans will have it at the 15-yard line when we come back tied at 7. And hasten to play. You back when he played here a long time ago, and things have changed. Boats were a little cheaper back then. Things were different. McCullough picked up a couple on first down. Well, both coaches said that the key to this game was controlling the line of scrimmage. The Trojans controlled it early. That's exactly what they're going to continue to try and do as long as the running game is there. They're trying again, and they're kind of stopped the loss this time. Amari Lowe right there to make the stop. Football is a game of adjustments, and we're going to see who winds up making better ones here, because this game right now is being played on a pretty even field. Well, Amari Lowe on that particular play, a defensive back, really knifed in there quickly. He, they might have had a corner fire or a corner cat, what we call it, on that particular play because he made the tackle very quickly in the backfield. Third down and 10. Straight back. Palmer to throw. Throws underneath for Colbert. And Colbert, I don't think, got enough. Tuyasasopo makes the stop. Zach Tuyasasopo getting a start today because Kai Ellis is not going to be available to this football team for anywhere from two to six weeks. Now, if you ask Kai, he says two. If you ask the trainers, they say six. And he was a valuable part of the Washington defense. So, Tuyasa Sopo being asked to step up here. And step up he did on that particular play, stopping Colbert short of the first down, so they're able to the Huskies to get the ball back here. Charles Frederick going to be the deep man to receive the punt of Mike McGillivray. That's a rocker. And Frederick's going to let it go. It's going to wind up being a heck of a punt. Down inside the five yard lines. Finally, down at about the four. So it wasn't pretty, but it was effective. 55 yards for McGillivray. He'll take it. Well, as a freshman, Charles Frederick will learn that he can't let that ball bounce like that. He's got to try and judge it a little bit better in the air and try and get over there and make that catch. Otherwise, that ball will roll like that, and you end up being deep in your own territory. Husky's going to start right at their own five-yard line. Alexis is going to be the tailback. Wilson, the fullback. Give it to Alexis on first down. Nothing to do it. Right there to close it down, Frank Strong. Strong, an interesting guy. He was a running back at USC when he first came. Saw a little action of running back, and he was a safety. And Pete Carroll said, listen, you can do all these things. I'm going to make you a weak side linebacker. Well, what Pete is trying to do, especially with the type of defense he likes to play, he wants a very quick, active football team on the field. So by putting strong at the linebacker spot with that defensive back ability, you're putting a lot quicker player, a better athlete at that position. Second down and nine. Pick it up, throw out of his own end zone. Got a man picked up. Intercepted by Potomano, touchdown Trojans! 
And it is the Trojans who take advantage of a turnover and with it take the lead. Cody goes back to pass. A little play action fake. He's looking for the tight end. Cohen, it just kind of leads him a little bit too much on the pass on a little corner route. Nice play by, that was number, excuse me, that was number 84, Kevin Ware, that, that ball was intended for. And Palomaro makes the interception, takes it back for the touchdown. Conversion is up and good, and the Trojans lead the Huskies 14 to 7, giving Washington a little bit more of what they are used to having themselves. When we return, we'll send you back to Kevin Fraser at our College Football Saturday studio with a preview of our Nissan Halftime Report. The Trojans lead it by seven. Zach Sherwood to kick it away. High kick, but a fairly short kick. Frederick at the five-yard line. This guy can go to the 20. And hammer on a good special teams play that time by Kevin Arbett. Pete Carroll was talking about what a great special teams player our bet is. Polamalu, speaking of Pete Carroll, Pete Carroll said Polamalu is his best player. He had the touchdown. He did a very good job on that, on that touchdown play. And one thing Pete talked about was Polamalu in, in space. He likes him around the football. He makes a lot of tackles, but he wanted to work on him as far as being a coverage guy in space. Did a great job in space that time by picking that ball off and taking it back for a touchdown. And we talked about the Trojan secondary, and there you see what they accomplished just last week against Stanford. Now they have a touchdown today. Pick it again, might be checking off. Short drop again. They're going to float that out. They're going to do that until they get it. And they still haven't got it. Every time they see that, they've checked off to it, and they haven't been successful in any of three tries. What they're seeing is press bump and run coverage out there on the outside, and they feel like they're going to take an opportunity to, to run a fade route and see if they can get a big play out of it. Uh, that time the ball was thrown a little bit too far outside by Cody Pickett, but I'm sure they'll keep coming back to that because if they hit one of those, they're big plays. It'll be second and ten now. Ball right at the 24-yard line. 14 to seven, the Trojans lead at 807 left second quarter. Here's the option. Pitch to Alexis. Trojans defended that very well. Strung the field out. And finally forced Alexis out of bounds, and it was again Troy Polamalu who made that play. Polamalu's all around the football. A very, very active player in their secondary. And there's no question their secondary is probably one of those, the strengths of this football team. Very experienced back there, very athletic, and very good size for the corners and their safety. And, and Pete Carroll's not only got two good cover corners, he's actually got about four good cover corners, one of whom was playing safety, Antoine Simmons. Great back picket to throw. Got time, throws underneath this time. And it's going to be enough for a first down to fullback, Matthias Wilson. Cody does a good job on this play of taking what the defense gives him. His receiver's down, Bill recovered. Matthias Wilson just kind of sneaks out of the backfield, little check down receiver, and makes a good job of, of avoiding a tackle and getting the first down. Matthias isn't as good a blocker as Kim Walker is the starter, but he's a much more athletic player. And you saw there, he can make athletic plays. So first down for the Huskies. They run the option to the other side this time. Pick it on a key at the 40, 45, the 49 yard line. And another Husky first down. Pickett got drilled. It was a little slow and wobbly getting up. Nice job on the option by, by Cody again. Comes down the, the left side, gives a little arm fake with the football, and turns it upfield, makes some nice yards, and, and does take a nice hit there by number 29, Cash, again. But again, first down. That option play has really been working for them. There's the FedEx air and ground stats of USC with the numbers right now on both sides of the board. Very even, 76 running, 75 passing for the Trojans. And they might have taken a little bit too much time here. Picking three carries, 33 yards in the game off that option. It's not as, as fancy an option as they ran with Marcus Tuyasa Sopo. Basically, this is... Uh, by choice, a, a rather vanilla Washington offense there. Ball start on the offense. 
And that's Cody Pickett who went down. We told you he got up wobbly. I just think he got his bell rung. Behind Cody Pickett is a guy by the name of Taylor Barton, who's an interesting story. He was recruited by Rick Neuheisel at Colorado and opted to come and join Neuheisel in Colorado. When Neuheisel came here after Barton redshirted at Colorado, we're going to get another look to see the hit that Tony Pickett, or rather, Cody Pickett took. Took it from Cash. That's uh, Cash's helmet right on the shoulder, actually. And that uh, could be maybe more than just having your bell rung. We're starting to say T Taylor Barton came to Colorado because of Rick Neuheisel. When Neuheisel came here to Seattle, he wanted to join him, but uh, that was not allowed. So Barton went down to City College of San Francisco, played on the national championship team there. And then, after discussions with the president of the University of Washington, just to make sure there was no hanky-panky, nothing illegal about it, New Heisel yeah. brought uh, Taylor Barton up here, and he was in a battle with Cody Bick Pickett for the starting quarterback job until the first game of the regular season. I got it. And I talked with Taylor yesterday, and he is just so happy to be involved in this environment. He, he would like to play more, there's no question about it, but he just loves being involved in this University of Washington environment. Uh, he knows he's, he's the backup quarterback, and he always said, I'm going to be ready just in case my time comes. And I, and I told him, you know, you're always one play away from and being in the ball game, and here it is, that one play, he's got to be in the ball game, and hopefully he's prepared and ready to go. Yeah, everywhere we go, every quarterback that we've seen has wanted to talk to you. And uh, Cody Pickett's an interesting guy. He, he's a tough guy. He comes from a cowboy family. He's a cowboy. His dad was a world champion. Dad, world champion Roper is in the, in the rodeo. Uh, Cody was a, a rodeo champion in high school. And, like you said, a very tough guy. So I think he'll be back in here if this isn't something major. Rick Neuhauser was telling us yesterday, you don't want to get in a fight with Cody Pickett. <laughs> and more than you don't want to get in a fight with him, you don't want to play cards with him. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he said he's been gambling since he was eight years old. He knows all the tricks. So Taylor Martin will take over as Pickett will go for x-rays, I'm sure. We'll try to get a report. John Jackson will be on that one. I'm quite certain. Martin's first snap. They give it to Alexis, running outside. Alexis gets the corner, gets across midfield to the 47 yard line. Chris Richard makes the stop. Appears to be the right shoulder of Pickett. And you hate to see that right shoulder, and it looks like it could be a shoulder separation or a shoulder bruise, hopefully. Barton out of Beaverton, Oregon. As we said, went to Colorado. Redshirt in Colorado. Came down plenty here at City College of San Francisco. He's checking off, too. You better hurry. He's got three seconds to get the playoff, and he does. And they come with a blitz. And Barton now will have to step up, but he's got no place to go. Ran right into Bernard Riley. Well, that time, USC did a great job of, of disguising their coverage. They showed Taylor one thing and then backed out of it after he audibleized and, and the play wasn't there anymore. Good job of disguising their coverage back there because the Huskies have been taking advantage of their looks as they showed them too early. Martin averaged 343 yard passing yards per game at City College of San Francisco. So, and that's pretty high caliber football they play. Third down and long, Barton to pass. Throws, got a man, Austin, first down, Huskies. In front of Palomalo. And that completion right there would do so much for Taylor Barton's confidence. Being able to come in there, complete a, a pass here. Elston runs a nice, nice look curl route. Taylor delivers it right on the numbers. And one of the things Rick Neuheisen talked about yesterday, what he likes about Taylor Barton is his ability to make plays. He's a quarterback that not only does all the things right that a quarterback can do, throw the football or whatever, but he makes plays in ball games. And there are certain quarterbacks that do a better job of that than others, and he's one of those. Yeah, we asked him how much of a drop-off there was from Pickett to Barton, and uh, Rick said not very much. Pickett probably has a little bit of a stronger arm. Barton probably wants the option a little bit better. That time he won Hopkins for Reggie Williams. Big upsets in college football today so far. We're still early. Those guys talk about running the table. 
two teams in the Pac-10 Conference running the table. Kellen says one, Artie says the other. I don't think they'll be in. Fumble, and I think the Trojans may have it. They do. USC has it. Bad exchange. That sometimes happens with a new quarterback. Mike Patterson, the freshman, got on top of that one quickly. Taylor hasn't found his hands separate there as he comes from underneath the center and the ball comes free and he tries desperately to get it. There's so many bodies in front of him. Doesn't come up with the uh, recovery. It's just, look at his hand, just trying to get in there and get the football, but he can't get the football. It, it, it's, it's just too bad. You hate to have a fumbled snap. That's one of the most basic things in football that there is, but you see it happen a lot. Give him a cut off first down, nothing doing. He's run down from behind by Tuiasa Sopa. Who's now made two big plays in a row? Huskies had two turnovers on the season coming into this game and have two in this game now. Well, they said they needed a big game out of Zach Tuiasa Sopo today because of the, the uh, loss of Ty, Ty Ellis. And so far, he's come up very big. It looked like early in the ball game they were running the ball right at him, but it seems like he's made some adjustments and now he's starting to make some plays. Second down and 14. throw. Kelly's got it in the midfield with a 45-yard line. Chris Massey makes the stop. Perfect execution. Pass from Palmer to Kareem Kelly. He comes back to that same play-action pass again where he fakes the ball to McCullough and he comes up and runs a little seam route to Kelly in the slot and, and Kelly makes a good catch on the play and Carson delivers a nice ball. And that leads us to our trivia question. Quinn Kelly's going to pass 28 straight games. Who holds the USC record for most consecutive games with at least one catch? It's tough one. Landrigan. And he gets one or two. They don't run the fullback very much. I'd take a guess and say John Jackson on that trivia question. John Jackson. Ooh, I like that. Just going out on the limb. You could be right about that. Sometimes quarterback in the ball game now. And a slot back spot. He's the backup quarterback, but you have an idea that maybe cooking something up here. There's Palmer. Give him this time to McCullough. McCullough a little gap across the 40 to the 38 yard line. Got about eight. I really like what the Trojans are doing with their running game. It, it really, it, that seems to be their best running play. It's a nice little pop-off tackle. Here's McCullough in another uniform, and this guy can scoop. 10-1-8, his best for the 100 meters. 10-1-7, actually. That is moving. I'll tell you. <laughs> Third down and three, big play here. McCullough at the right side, cuts it back. He's got the first down and more to the 30-yard line, but a flag is down. Looks like we could have a holding call to bring this one back. We do. That's the first penalty against USC, and this is a team that uh, has been penalized as much as anybody in the conference. And that's something they talked about all week long this week, was trying to cut down on those penalties, cut down on the mistakes. on the offense. The penalty's 10 yards from the previous spot. Repeat third down. Remember when they used to call this tailback you, and the tailback would carry the ball 40, 45 times a game? McCullough's carried it 21 times already. In this <laughs> He's game. on pace for that, yeah, I tell you. Yeah, he is. Nice coverage by the Husky secondary down the field as Carson couldn't find anybody to throw to. Tried to scramble around, 
But number 28, Chris Massey, makes the play on him, forces him out of bounds. Fourth down, Huskies. And they will punt it away. Gilbury will try to bury the Huskies deep in their own territory once again. That's Charles Frederick, the freshman from Boca Raton. They have three players on this Husky team. I think three contributors out of the same high school in Boca Raton, Florida. I'll tell you more about that. This is a high, twisting kick, fair catch call by Frederick wisely, and he makes it at the 20-yard line. 30-yard punt to the 20-yard line. Well, let's go back to our trivia question. Kareem Kelly's caught a pass 28 straight games. Who holds the USC record for most consecutive games with at least one catch? The answer is, you got it, John Jackson. People are going to think I cheated on that, but I didn't. I'll vouch for you. I know you did. I just know John was a great receiver when he was at USC, and he's a guy that, because I know him and I know he was a great receiver, hey, he was a good guess. I like that guess. John Jackson was not only a great receiver, John Jackson was a great baseball player, too. Two-sport athlete. First back in the ball game. In the running back spot. He gets the call this time. Spins away from one tackle. Nice move across the 25 to 27. Big time. Well, we spoke with John Jackson. Let's hold it here for just a moment. We're going to get an injury update in a moment, but the Huskies going without a huddle here. So they come right to the line of scrimmage. At the 27, fumble again. Ball's loose. And the Huskies got it back. Wow. Kyle Ben. That could have been disastrous for Washington. And they come right back to the line of scrimmage again. That's something they've got to continue to work on because these two don't get a lot of snaps in practice at the same time. That ball was on the ground for a long time and a very on the spot. Kyle Ben gets that fumble recovery. Normally your center will never get that fumble recovery but that ball was on the ground so long that he had a chance to see it down there. I, I'm not sure the Trojans saw it down there. Normally, there's a communication right when the ball's on the exactly. ground. Exactly, and the defensive players are looking for the footballs, so they're usually the ones that usually find it first. Right now, let's go to the sideline, get an injury report from John Jackson. JJ? Well, Barry, first of all, it's great to be part of a trivia answer at Warren Moon's <laughs> home, so I got to give thanks to Warren for letting me be part of his game, but for, Co for the Washington Huskies, Cody Pickett is out. He's gone to the locker room, sprained shoulder. They're going to do x-rays, and like Warren says, for the quarterback position, Taylor Barton has his chance now. It's his time to shine. Barry? All right, thanks very much. When you're true, part of the trivia question also means you're getting old. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call something with mine that invited in history? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's right. Ancient. Ancient history. That's right. Huskies done a good job on third down, as you see. Now they're looking at a third and two. They dodged the bullet already. Barton Long count. Fumble it again. And falls on. Three fumbles on the exchange, and the Huskies got two of them back, but they will have to give it back to the Trojans with 34 seconds remaining to be played in the half. Trojans are going to take a timeout. Why not? They got a chance to get it back, maybe even come after the punter here. This is something that the Huskies have got to get worked out quickly as, as they possibly can because although this is a, seems to be a very simple thing, the center quarterback exchange is one of the most important things that it creates all the timing in the world for your offense. And when you don't have that snap going smoothly, it creates paranoia, not only with your quarterback and your center, as far as are they going to get the exchange, also with your coaching staff. Now, now they're thinking, can we run these certain plays because they're having problems with the exchange? So they've got to get this worked out as quickly as possible. See what the Trojans do here if they try to come after the punter here. Play run back. Short twisting kick. Our bet might have a chance at the 30. Tries to cut it the other way. Now he might pick up some room to the 40, to the 45 midfield. Flags everywhere. So this one's going to come back. Our bet found a gap. But when he cut back, I think maybe uh, he set his blockers up to commit a foul. It looked like Paul Amalu might have got caught on that one with a, either a block in the back or holding. Flag is sitting at the 38-yard line. 
Rush Palmer will have 20 seconds left. If the Trojans experienced uh, this very scene uh, in Eugene a couple of weeks ago. block in the back on a return team during the run, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. And Joey Harrington brought his team back. I believe it was from their own 11 yard line with 41 ticks left. One good thing about college football for the player is they never point out your your number on who made the foul in that play, but it doesn't help us up here in the booth as far as knowing who committed that foul. That's right. So we'll see how the Trojans play it. They're going to play it cozy. They're just going to take a knee here and take a seven-point lead into the locker room. And why not? Pretty good first half of football for the USC Trojans. Now a flag drops, and it drops 25 yards from the line of scrimmage. That's the official that usually counts how many players are on the field. I'm wonder, wondering if the uh, Washington Huskies have too many guys on the field. The legal substitution on the defense. Be five yards, repeat the down. Well, there are 14 seconds left. And see if this changes anything for USC. I doubt that it will. Pete Carroll has to be very happy with how his team played this first half. He really does because they started out moving the football, then they get the turnover and get behind. And that's going to be it. End of the first half. And a look at the scoreboard shows the USC Trojans 14, the Washington Huskies 7. Zach Sherwood is going to kick it off. Alexander and Frederick deep for the Huskies. Sherwood hits this one to about the seven yard line. Frederick. Starts back to 20, tries to bounce it outside, can't do it. Numbers at the end of the first 30 minutes, uh, and they are somewhat comparable. 171 total yards for USC, uh, and as we said, Carson Palmer, 7 of 7 for 94 yards. Huskies have turned it over twice in this ball game. They had only turned it over twice on the season coming into this game, and the Trojans have been pretty careful with the ball. Pickett is going to be the quarterback. So we'll see how he goes. He's a cowboy. He's tough. <laughs> Those cowboys take a, a lot of ticket, but they just keep on kicking. Pass is caught this time by Reggie Williams, his first catch of the day. Be a yard or two short of the first out. Cash defending. Reggie Williams will be a big time receiver before he leaves the University of Washington. Pickett throws the ball, but you can tell he doesn't have his full follow through in his arm, it doesn't look like. And that's something we're going to have to watch the rest of the ball game, as I'm sure the Washington coaches will be watching that, too. I'm sure the SC coaches will be watching also. <laughs> See, right now, would not be considered a deep threat. Somebody left early. A little uh, problem with the snap count, I think. Joe Collier might have been the guy who jumped early, but it looked like the whole right side left early. Dead ball, ball start, offense. Sometimes that happens when you go from one quarterback to another quarterback, back to another one. The, the snap counts are a little bit different as far as their cadence, and you might have a guy leave a little bit early. Pickett's still flexing that arm as he comes to the line of scrimmage. Gives to Hurst. Hurst got a gap. Hurst gets to the 40 yard line. John Cousins finally runs him down. Great block up front by Elliot Zajac. Wow, you can really see the burst in, in Willie Hurst when he gets the football as compared to Rich Alexis. Really hits into the secondary nice. And for a guy that's not very big, really goes forward north and south as a, as a runner. I really like that about Willie Hurst. Ball right at the 40-yard line. There's the numbers on Hurst. Give the fullback this time. Nothing doing. Ball comes out late, but that will be after the play. Lonnie Ford, first man to him, but Trojans really caved that one in very quickly. Oh, we told you at the beginning how tough. Husky Stadium is to play in their last 70 games. All they've done is win 58 of them. 
They've been undefeated half the time in the last 10 years. Let's go! Taylor Barton is going to come back in at quarterback now as Pickett leaves. Pickett obviously bothered by that arm. So now they're going to have to worry. They're going to go out of the shotgun, so that's going to take care of the center snap, at least for this play. Barton will pass on first down. In trouble. Hit as he throws and throws it away. Kenichi Udizi, the freshman, coming hard. A lot of pressure by Udizi this time. Taylor tries to wait in there as long as he can, and he takes a while up, and they might be down to their third quarterback if they let these things keep happening. So it's going to be third down now at 10. Elstrom in the game. He's made big catches, one for a touchdown. And one for a third down conversion. On the shotgun again. Barton will step up. He'll run. He's got all kinds of room. And he's going to have the first down at midfield. He saw it. He took it. Kevin Arbett runs it down. Nice job by Taylor Barton that time. Feeling the pressure coming from the outside. Saw a little hole open up in the middle, and he just took it, turns up field, and makes something happen. Gets the first down, aware of that, and gets down on the ground, more importantly. He's got to be very careful as far as injuries are concerned because the next guy out is a, a true freshman, Casey Paul. So you don't want to put this game in a true freshman's hands. First down just across midfield. The game is to Hurst again. Hurst really gets to the hole in a hurry, I'll say that. He picks up almost five. Second down, six. Martin rolls out, going to throw, now he's not. He's going to run. He gets it uh, close to another first down. At about the 39-yard line, Udizi runs it down. A little play-action pass here by Taylor Barton. He doesn't see anything downfield, so he turns it up. Make some positive habit. I think he's got to look downfield a little bit longer before he decides to take off as quarterback, though. Yeah, he Give was out of there. It's a chance to develop. He was out of there in a hurry. He wasn't he? <laughs> you don't want to get too caught up in running the football like that as a quarterback because that's where the big hits come from because you don't know exactly where those guys are coming from. They come from all different directions. But a first down at 39. Hurst, Hurst, cuts back again. Got a little gap. Oh. To the 15 and out of bounds at the 12 yard line. Chris Cash runs it out. What a quick move to get to the outside. I really like this Willie Hurst. You see the play starts out to the right side, but he's going to come all the way back around to the left side. And that's the type of ability he has as a running back. And now it's just a foot race. He tries to give him a little juke, but he gets what he can, gets out of bounds before Cash try and, and, and make the play on him out of bounds. So the Huskies knocking on the door. They're at the 12-yard line. Short drop and a swing for Hurst out of the backfield. That play a little slow to develop, and that wasn't going anywhere right from the get-go. It had a chance, but Willie Hurst kind of bobbled the ball as he got it. If he would have been able to catch that football on the run, then he's able to run for the flag. But Mike Pollard made a great, did a great job of running over to the football after that hesitation. And then they got a lot of other coaches around the football. Also, John Cousins, number 23. So it'll be second and 12 now. check off they're checking off to either the option or to the fade route here they checked off to the option and you can see they were all over it like you said and DZ kind of almost tackles both of them Taylor just was able to get back to the line of scrimmage and make something positive happen out of could have been a disastrous play 
BKU, they call him. Big Kenichi Udisi. And he is all of that. Yes, he is. Huskies have done well on third down, as you see, six of nine. Big one right here, third and 11. Hey, here they come with the blitz from the left side. Barton throws, caught, touchdown, Williams. Strong was coming on a weak side blitz. Simmons was coming from the free safety spot. Barton hung right in there and drilled it. And Williams took a shot on that play, but this was all communication between the quarterback and the receiver. They had a weak side blitz coming. The receiver breaks the route off. Taylor puts the ball in the money. And this is the advantage of having a guy that's 6'4", 215 pounds. He can make that type of catch for you. Just a freshman, local product from Tacoma Lakes. Try for point is up and good, and guess what, folks? We got a tie game, 9-19 remaining. Third quarter, the Huskies 14, the Trojans 14, and we're coming back. Twisted kick this one is headed for our bet, and it's going to go out of bounds. So Trojans are going to have a good field position to start here. You can see here at number one, Strong comes up the inside on, the, on a blitz. Free and they kick out of bounds against the kicking team. Penalty accepted. It'll be placed at the 35-yard line. First down. And Taylor Barton does a good job of, of getting that football off as quickly as he can to Reggie Williams as he breaks the route off on a slant route. They get the touchdown. Collegiate dollars very well. First down, Trojans at the 35. McCollum got a gap to the 40. Good stiff arm to the 45. First down. Alex Holmes, nice clear on block to open up that outside. It's important for the Trojans again right here to try and establish that running game and, and try and get back into this football game emotional wise because the Huskies now are going to try and take advantage of the crowd if the crowd can get into this ball game. SC wants to do something to, to divert that. You know, with a single setback, who is Landrigan now? Three wideouts, flags fall before the snap. Dead ball, false start against the offense at the five yard penalty. So they'll start first and 15 now. Single setback, Landrigan. Three wide. Stop. Yeah, that surprises me. They very rarely give the ball to Charlie Landry again. He only carried it eight times all year last year as the starting fullback. Got a couple of carries in this game so far. Trojans went 75 yards in 15 plays their first possession since that time. And now had 19 plays and have gained 96 yards. Here's McCullough. He's got some room. McCullough will get it all the way to about the 42 yard line. That's going to be enough for a first down. Madabi makes the stop, but McCullough with another big play. Nice little counter action play here. It's going to start this way and come back to the right. You see McCullough with the lead blocks out there by Landrigan and good block downfield by Colbert. They've been doing a great job on this right side all day long, and McCullough's done a great job of seeing the hole. Whether he has a break inside or break outside, that time he broke outside, made very positive yards. Cullen now over 100 yards rushing. First down to 42, and they're doing it all on the ground. Here's McCullough again. Moving the pile down to the 36, gain of five. Madabi being carried that time. Again, the Trojans are trying to establish that line of scrimmage, and they're doing a good job of it on this drive so far. 
you've got to give this young offensive line they have credit. They're really gaining confidence as this game goes along because they're playing against a pretty good University of Washington defensive line. And they're having their way with them right now. Kelly goes to the far side. They're going to slot right. Adams goes in motion. Flags fall. And the car is stopped. And we'll see about the flags. Anthony Kelly was there to crash that play. See about the penalty here. Looks like offsides on the Huskies and probably somebody lining up in the neutral zone. Yep. That's something you don't want to happen because you don't want to give a team five free yards like Off that. Offsides on the defense. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Results in a first down. Take a look at the FedEx USC ground stats. And uh, this kind of tells you uh, where they're running. And they're not running to the left side. <laughs> they're going straight old fashioned up the gut. And they're doing a great job of, of blocking at the, at the point of attack. Uh, Norm Kadick, who's a guy who they thought they'd be able to take advantage of, they're doing a great job at the center spot on the All American Larry Triplett. Yeah, I don't think we've called Triplett's name but once or twice. There's McCall again. Couldn't get started that time. And there's Larry Triplett. There you go. Yeah. The All Americans always show up somehow. Triplett's a big play guy. Guy that the Huskies need to be a big player. He really is. Of his 14 tackles this year, eight of those have been for losses. He also has two sacks. And he's got a couple of pass deflections, so he's a very active defensive lineman for a guy his size. He's not very tall, as you can see here, but he carries a load with him. He's got five tackles in this game. And he's very quick. A couple of them have been for a loss. Palmer checking on him. He hadn't put it up yet in this game. Just got the play off. Play fake. Palmer will run at the 30 and out of bounds, about the 27-yard line, maybe the 28. Zach Tuiasasopo was very lucky there. He didn't get a personal foul call. And he hit Carson going out of bounds. Very close call, but. Just a nice little bootleg, and he's coming out. He's looking for a receiver. He's looking for a land to get in the flat. He's got his tight end Holmes, but he's covered, so Carson tries to make something happen. And as you can see, it was very close whether he was hit out of bounds or not by Greg Kruger. So a big third down play here, third and seven, the ball at the 28-yard line. Pretty long field goal from him. Palmer straight back, four-man rush, he'll run, got room, 25, fumble the ball. I called it down. Well, they are going to say he was down. I don't think he was. Looks like he might be a little short, though. It is a 17 to 14 USC lead over the Washington Huskies. We're coming back. 17 to 14, the Trojans take the lead on the 40 yard field goal by Davis. Rick Neuheisel now gonna have to find a way to get it back once again. Zach Sherwood will do the kicking. They've been kicking the ball away from Brock Alexander. Let's see what they do here. Not going to kick it to him this time. This is a short kick. Frederick at the 15-yard line. Frederick starts back running laterally, and that's not a good idea. Stopped right at the 15 by Jason Leach. Take a look at this fumble, and the question you have to ask, was it a fumble? Was that ball out before that knee hit the ground? It's close. Very, it's very close. close. Almost simultaneous. The Huskies did recover it, but the official said he was down. Resulted in a 40-yard field goal try, made good. Here are the numbers, and uh, very comparable, as is the scoreboard. Boy, look at that. Both teams 94 yards passing. Both teams 13 first downs. Taylor Barton remains the quarterback. I suspect will for the remainder of the game. Gotta put it up on first down. Throws a duck that's caught. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how that happened. Joe Collier made the catch. That could have been a real problem. 
I tell you what, I've thrown some passes that look like that, Barry, and I, went, and I didn't get a hit throwing them. Here Taylor goes back to throw. Gets not hit by his own offensive lineman. But luckily, Joe Collier at 6'6 has a chance to get that football as it kind of floats up there in the air. They get away with one on that one. Boy, did they. The seventh Husky to catch a pass today. That was Udizi again on that pressure. He's been all over the place. He's playing great. To give to Hurst again. He bounces it outside. He'll be close to a first down. I think he's going to get it. No fumble. Frank Strong made the stop. But it's going to be a Husky first down. I really like the vision of Willie Hurst. He hits the hole at the point of attack, but he has great vision to see where the cutback is. And that's what the good backs can do. When there's nothing there at the point of attack, they make something else happen. And these plays give him the option to do that, and he's taking advantage of wherever the, the space is in the line of scrimmage. So it'll be a first down just short of the 28-yard line. the fullback. That'll be a gain of about four. Now eight different receivers to make a catch today for the Huskies. They go out on the shotgun on second down. Barton will throw. Now he steps up. He throws and hits first right in the back. You can't blame Hurst for that one. It looked like Barton was about to tuck it away and go run. Hurst was looking for somebody to block. Here, Taylor in the pocket doesn't see anything down the field and at the last second tries to get it off to Hurst, but sometimes those plays happen. Hurst is trying to make something happen by throwing a block. He's thinking his quarterback is taking off and quarterback sees Hurst at the last second. Those things happen sometimes. It's only third and five. That was on Tyler, Taylor Barton. I'll go from the shotgun once again. He just got that call. <laughs> Did he? <laughs> I'm out, Washington. I'm not sure Rick Neuheisel is real happy with that. 316 remaining third quarter. Trojans 17, Huskies 14. We're coming back. Well, there's the loneliest man in the place. Number three is uh, Cody Pickett. Got the bad wing right now, really unable to complete his throwing motion, and that's the reason that he's on the sidelines watching Taylor Martin. Martin looking at a third down and five. 17 to 14 ball game, the Trojans lead the Huskies. Martin will put it up, short drop, throws. Boy, he threw it into traffic, and Arnold got a hand on the ball, but there were Trojans everywhere. Kevin Arbett was there. He had plenty of help. Wow, he was lucky on that one. Just a little smash route again, and Arbett almost gets underneath that football and takes it back the other way. They're very fortunate to get away with a, just an incompletion on that pass. I think Taylor's got to keep his eyes down the field a little bit more before he comes to his receiver because they're really breaking on his footballs right now which means he's looking at his receiver too long. Our Ben going to be the deep man to receive the punt here. A block on the punt. Line drive kick, he drove it. Our Ben takes it over his shoulder at the 10-yard line. Now that he outkicked the coverage. No, nice play defensively that time by Greg Carruthers on special teams. and. He'll be back at about the 10 or 11 yard line. 58 yard punt, the 12 yard return. At plus 46, pretty good. He'll be at the 22 yard line. If you're 
USC right now, this is the time in the ball game. I'd love for your offensive line to just take control and methodically move this football down the field, eat time off the clock, and hopefully score some points. It'd be a great momentum builder for them, confidence builder for them going into the fourth quarter if they could do that. Second down and six. Palmer will throw, and he will swap back to the 19-yard line. Carruthers, the first man to him with help from coming in the dobby. Grant Carruthers, who's been all over the field tonight, comes in on a strong safety blitz off the left side, beats the block by McCullough, and, and forces Carson to have the double clutch as the rest of the Huskies come in and make the play. Great play by Carruthers, who's been all over the football field today. Not to mention Madani, who's got 12 tackles now and a fumble recovery. And made the big stop on that fourth down play early in the game. Out of the shotgun, Palmer rolls, throws, and threw it out of the reach of Kareem Kelly. I think Kelly was looking inside. Palmer threw it outside. And here comes that crowd you were talking about, Barry, when the defense does something good. SC's been able to keep the crowd out of the game, but now here they come. So the Huskies should get it back in reasonably good field position. McGillray to do the punting, and Frederick, the deep man for Washington. Huskies coming after this one. They don't get it. Low twisting kick. And it's going to take a sideways bounce, go out of bounds to the 46 yard line. So Washington going to have it with a fairly short field. So Barton has the Huskies at the 46-yard line. On the option, Barton keeps across midfield to the 48. Pollard on the stop for the Trojans. Game of six. Again, every time they see those safeties down and it looks like it's man coverage, they're all to that option play again. That time Taylor op option. To the left side, got some nice positive yard, six yard gain on first down. That's what you want to get when you run the option. Antoine Simmons uh, has just come out with uh, some sort of an injury. We'll keep you posted. Might just be a cramp. Black game. Black game. Black. They run the option the other way. Now they hand to Alexis, and Alexis can't find that gap. Run down very well by Kenichi Udizi, who's having a big game. Huge second half. It seems like we're calling his name every snap in the second half. Kenichi Udizi has really stepped up, especially for a freshman in a big ball game like this. He's been all over the field making plays, pressuring the quarterback. That time he shows he can run down the line of scrimmage and make plays also. This guy has a tremendous future as a football player at USC. Well, Cody Pickett really wants to come back in the game, doesn't he? It's killing him being on the other yeah, side. He's such a competitor. Barton going to throw this time roll right into the pressure. And now he throws, throws it a one hopper. Deshaun Hill was coming and Barton rolled right into it. Nice call by the USC defensive staff. Barton on a low rollout to that right side, but that's where the pressure was coming from out of the secondary. And they had that play, they had that play down like they knew it was being called, like they were in the in the uh, husky huddle. That's going to be the last play of the third quarter. Let's see, though, before we uh, jump away. Let's make sure that uh, they don't put time back on the clock here. There'll be a discussion amongst the officials. Put uh, two seconds back on the clock, please. Two seconds. Thank you. So they'll put two seconds back on the clock and they'll try to get a television crew off the field. McLaughlin <laughs> will come on to punt. Trojans play for the run back or look to block that game. Somewhere around 
the 15 yard line. I would think we'll see where they mark this. And they're going to go past the 15 to the 17 yard line. So out of bounds to the 17. That's where the Trojans will have it when we come back. Fourth quarter coming up. 17 to 14. The Trojans over the Huskies. Don't go away. 15 minutes of football left. 17 to 14 ball game as we start the final period of play. And Ward, it really does seem like this game is all teed up, just waiting for somebody to take it. It really is a very close ball game. Both teams kind of sparring back and forth. Fourth quarter should be very interesting to see who makes the big plays down the stretch. And Cody picking a guy who just, can just sit on the sidelines and watch. He can't do any more than that. He's got to watch Taylor Martin trying to do it right now. It's the Trojans who are going to try to do it. They give him a cut on first down. And McCullough gets a couple to about the 19 yard line. Right now, let's go down to the sidelines once more. John Jackson, JJ. Hey, Barry, well, they always talk about how tough it is to play here at Husky Stadium. Well, it's exactly that. The student body behind me, they go crazy every time the offense approaches the ball. This stadium seats 72,500. And when you look at the awnings that overhang the stadium, the noise actually vibrates up and comes back down, makes it very difficult on the opponent. Warren, you know about that. Barry? All right, thanks very much, JJ. Straight back to pass goes Palmer and Colbert wants a flag he's not going to get one. Colbert said I was held or I'd have been there. Nice coverage down there by Massey on that particular play and as he comes down here on the post he might have got grabbed he might have a good argument there but Fisher said no harm no foul. Palmer who stands six foot five but he's able to move around like a guy much smaller running out to his right just kind of lost that ball towards the sideline oh very close looked like he might have had that foot in bounds but I don't think he had control of the football at the time he was in bounds. Miguel great a punt. Low short kick. And the Huskies will let this go and again they will have good field position at the 47 yard line. 32-yard punt, but no return. Taylor Bart will try to do a little business for the Washington Huskies when we come back. Welcome back. Let's take a look at the rent to center game summary. The Trojans, of course, lead the game by three. Points off Turner was the whole story of the game. Pickett, quarterback for Washington, out with an injured shoulder. Polamalu with the interception return for a touchdown for the Trojans. And McConnell with 118 yards rushing on 26 carries. But the Huskies will start at their own 48-yard line. Martin remains the quarterback. Alexis the tailback. Alexis straight ahead. Across midfield with about the 48-yard line of USC. Interestingly enough, Carson Palmer was 7 of 7 for 94 yards at the end of the first half and is now 7 of 10 for 94 yards. So 0 for 3, no yards in the second half. They've really kept him out of passing situations most of the ball game. In the passing situations that he had to have the second half, he's been able to not been able to connect on certain passes that he needs to connect on first down. Second and six, play fake. Barton with all day to throw. Going for it all. He's got a man. He underthrew him. And then Williams comes down with a brilliant catch. Reggie Williams showing that athletic ability and that 6'4 size and range going up and just snatching that ball out of the air. Nice play action pass here by Barton. He just lays it up there a little short, but Reggie adjusts in the air, goes up high, makes the catch with Cash and the defender up underneath him. Great catch by a young freshman. This kid has tremendous confidence, tremendous ability. Taylor Barton likes what he sees down the field. What a grab by the freshman. Big play guy makes a big play. 42 yards, first and goal Huskies. 
This is Alexis, nowhere to go. Nice play defensively. Polamalu wasn't about to let Alexis get back to the line of scrimmage. Troy Polamalu's been all around the football today, and you know, I'm really impressed with him as a football player. Most strong safeties are usually active within their defense, but this guy is a little bit more than active. He made big plays all day long for this Trojan football team. So it'll be second and goal. The ball back in the eight-yard line now. Alexis remains the lone setback. Three wideouts. Barton short drop. Throws caught. And Williams trying to fight for the end zone. Couldn't do it. It's going to be stopped at about the two-yard line. Chris Richard just hanging on. <laughs> I tell you what, this Reggie Williams is a load for any cornerback, and his potential is unbelievable. You know, what this kid is going to be able to do by the time he leaves this university is going to be something. And I kind of like him. I kind of like him because he wears my number. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. As we were talking earlier, you started as number 12 here, right? Exactly, and, and ended up changing to number one my next year. And, been that way for a long time, Gary. Yes, it has. Barton going to throw on third down. Look at end zone. Got a man in the back of the end zone, and he couldn't hit Kevin Ware. That ball had to be thrown perfectly, and uh, Barton got it up just a little bit. It would have been a great throw if he would have been able to get that in there, but he did have a defender in between him and the tight end Ware. This is where you want to miss as a quarterback down here. You either want your guy to be able to get the football or nobody get it. So they will play to tie here. Anderson, the place kicker. And they had 10 men on the field. Now they hurry an 11th man on the field. They have nine seconds to get this kickoff. They don't want to burn another timeout here. Five seconds, four seconds. Get it done. There's a little breakdown. That's still going to be a relatively short field goal, but Rick Neuheisel will look at it and say, what Play are the we game. doing? On the offense, five-yard penalty. I know they didn't mean to do this as far as taking that penalty, but they didn't burn up the timeout, which is good. And this probably gives him a better angle moving it back a little further away from the uh, from the end zone for the kicker by moving it back to the seven yard line. So I, I think it's going to turn out to be a pretty good move for him if he makes this kick. So now it will be a 25 yard field goal. Actually, they get the better angle. High snap. Pulled down nicely, though. Great job by Cody Pickett to reach up. And remember, he's got a bad shoulder and pull that snap down to make it a little easier for Anderson. We're tied at 17, 11, 13 left. But I'm sure the shoulder's really hurting. That, that was not easy to do. It really wasn't. I'm sure that, that shoulder's going to be very sore tomorrow. High towering kickoff. And we know that we'll let that one go in and out of the end zone. So the Trojans will start at the 20 yard line. You know, Elliot Zajac, their uh, long snapper, is also their starting guard. And last year, he was just the long snapper, so that's all he had to concentrate on. This year, because he's playing two positions now, he's had some problems with some of those snaps the last couple of games. And I think that's a result of having to play so much. Who knows, maybe he's a little banged up by the time he goes in there and snap that football. And some of those snaps aren't as crisp as they need to be. SC starts at the 20. Listen to the crowd. Give him a color. A color falls forward for about three. This is the time in the ball game where these Trojans are going to have to stand up and make some plays. They've had chances to win ball games the last few weeks. They haven't been able to make the plays. Here we are. We have a tie ball game. You're on the road. Fourth quarter. He's going to stand up, and you got to keep the mistakes as few as possible right now. Trojans have played virtually mistake-free football. Give it to McCullough again. McCullough somehow finds a gap. There wasn't much there, but he created something. And now it's going to be third and about four. 
third and three and four ideal situations for a quarterback a lot of options here don't have to force anything too far down the field you can also run the ball in this situation so these are the situations the Trojans want to stay in on these drives third and short First half, these were passing downs for you in the suit. Palmer going to throw. Now he throws and dropped by Colbert. He had it in his hands and just couldn't quite hang on. I think Omari Lowe might have gotten just enough of that ball to knock it out of his hands. Triplett was putting a pretty good push on Carson Palmer. Big play by Omari Lowe on this, on this play. Carson play action pass wants to go into the flat. Comes back across the middle of Colbert as, as Triplett is bearing down on him, but too little, too late. The ball just gets away from Colbert. Fourth down. I think Omari Lowe just got enough of it so that Colbert couldn't quite get a good grasp on the ball. And deal right upon again. Short kick again. That's a very short kick. That's going to be right at about midfield. Well, the punny game of USC is hurting them. They're giving a short deal to the Washington Huskies. Three times in a row now. We're coming back. Martin rolls to his right. Going to throw. Throws off his heels. Got Hurst out there all by himself. 40 at the 30. At the 20 and out of bounds. It was a great play by Hurst because the Trojans were coming on a blitz and Hurst made the block and then slipped out into the pattern. Hurst makes the block there on the corner and then slips out behind everybody on the other side. Nobody's responsible for him except the big defensive lineman chasing him. Riley, nice job by Barton to get the ball off under tremendous pressure. Big play for the Huskies. Great play by the senior Hurst to pick up that blitzer and then slip out. He checked him just long enough to allow Barton time to throw the ball. 31 yards to the 21. Barton going to throw again. It's time. Throw is end zone and incomplete. Just missed it. Arnold had an angle. It had to be a perfect pass, and Barton just missed him a little bit. Here are the FedEx Washington passing stats, and uh, they have been thrown to their wideouts with some consistency. Why not? They got good wideouts. Ten times for 128 yards, four times to the backs. That last one for 31, taking up much of that 49 yards. And that tight end figure would be a lot higher if Jeremy Stevens was still on this football team, but as we know, he's out with a broken foot. They'll be glad to get him back in about five weeks big-time player and a lot of the offense was built around Jeremy Stevens. Second down and ten. Straight ahead Hurst. Got about two. This is where somebody on this Trojan defense has to step up and make a big play. Try and knock this team out of field goal range. There's Jeremy on the sidelines in his crutches. I talked to him yesterday for a little while. He said he's really coming along with his progress. Really been working hard trying to get back as soon as he possibly can. This guy had the ability to be a probably a top 10 pick in the National Football League draft if he stayed healthy. But I'm sure the University of Washington would love to have him for the next two years. Came here as a quarterback. Martin short drop. Airs it out. Too tall. Intended for Williams. And they want a flag due to the Huskies. But they're not going to get one. And I, I'm not sure, but that they might not have a pretty good case because. Trojans did not allow Williams to jump. Well, just a fade route again. They, they tried to do this all day long. He gets a step on the on the defender cash, but the ball just sails behind him. This kid, you can look at his athletic ability and see how high he gets in the air, but you got to be really high to throw it out of his out of his reach. Might have jumped a little bit early that time. So they will try to take the lead on the 35-yard field goal by Anderson. Pick it to hold. Snap place. On its way. Got plenty on it. No good. And it remains tied at 17. Wow, that's a big miss there. John Anderson, who's been pretty reliable as a kicker, doesn't come through with that one. Palmer 
play fake throw. It got Kelly out there. And Amari Lowe recovered and knocked it down. You had him for a minute. Nice little fake reverse this time, and that ball just kind of hung up in the air. It seemed like forever. It gave Omari Lowe a chance to get back underneath it. He almost picked that ball off. Palmer's missed his last five passes after starting seven of seven. Gonna throw again, flag down. Palmer looking for Kelly again. He's got him out there, and Kelly can't quite hang on right off the fingertips. Wow, those are the plays I'm talking about. Somebody's got to step up and make a big play. That was a nicely thrown ball by Carson Palmer that time as we have a flag on this particular play. Again, a play action pass. Kelly with that tremendous speed gets behind low. That ball goes right off his hands. That should have been a catch. Should have been a catch. It's going to be a penalty against Washington, so the Trojans are going to get five yards, but they should have had a bunch. Those are plays that change field Deep position. Line up the neutral zone. Against the defense, five yard penalty, repeat second down. Those are plays that change field position and also change momentum in a ball game like this. In a tie ball game, like I said earlier, someone's got to step up and make a big play for these Trojans. This is what hasn't been happening for the last few weeks. This was nine penalties now. It's hurt him. Give him McCullough. And McCullough going to be close to a first down. I don't think he's going to get it. Jamon Willis on the tackle. It's going to be third down a yard. The Trojans converted their first three for third down opportunities. And since then, as you see, 0 for 8. Second effort, but I don't know. It's going to be close. I think he's short again, Mary. Terry Johnson was the first man to hit him. This will entirely depend on the spot, but I think you're right. I think it's going to be a little short. The thing that's puzzling is they haven't been in a lot of third longs, 12s, 15s, things like that. It's been relatively short distances, three, four, five, which you'd like to have. They still haven't been able to come out with the third down conversions. They're going to bring the punting unit on. Huskies trying to hustle people off the field here. McGillivray has struggled. That's an understatement. Hurst is the deep man. And he drives this one pretty good. Hurst at the 32 yard line. Can't get out of the grasp of the first man. It was Kevin Arbett. He's been down there every time. There he is again. Great special teams player for this team, as well as the defensive back, and he's been all over the field on special teams today. And like Pete Carroll said yesterday, a guy that's very valuable to them in a lot of different areas. Could probably start for most college football teams. But this secondary is so dominant on this football team, they have to find ways to get him in the ball game. Here you see what the Huskies have done. They've won 11 in a row amongst the leaders in the nation. Eight straight conference wins. Ten in a row here at home. Looking at a tie game right now. Barton throws for Hurst. Hurst in the flat cut by the first man. Gets out of bounds about the 37. Only going to be a gain of a couple of yards on the play. They ran that play earlier in the ball game. And it didn't look very good. This time Hurst with his speed just outruns up Polamalu to the sticks and gets a little positive gain out of it, but I don't like that play very much. What do you think, Barry? I, I agree with you. <laughs> First of all, I think it's slow developing. Yeah, I was just going to say, too long to set up and gives the defense time to recover. I think he's trying to find something downfield, and that's just a, a last-ditch option for him to dump it off like that. Going this time for Williams. He makes another brilliant catch. What a catch again by Reggie Williams, a difference maker. I hate to keep tooting this kid's horn, but he's a tremendous football player for a freshman. Nice coverage here by Richard, but he just goes up over him and makes the catch. Almost stays in bounds for the touchdown. 
He's the first true freshman to start here at the University of Washington in his first game since they started freshmen being able, able to be eligible back in 1975. So that shows you what type of talent he has to be able to start his first game of his freshman year. He's over 100 yards in receptions now. Five catches, 101 yards, and a touch. He's got a man open, does Barton. And out of bounds is Wilbur Hooks at about the 12-yard line. like the touch that Taylor Barton put on this particular pass because he had to lay it out there just softly enough for Hooks to, to run underneath it. As you watch Cody Pickett looking over there on the sideline, I'm sure he's rooting for his, his buddy and fellow teammate Taylor Barton to take his team in for the winning touchdown. So the ball at the 12-yard line. The clock is no factor at all. 6.27 left in the game. Trojan show blitz. They're back out of it. The option. Barton on a keep, and he's wrecked. Back at about the 14 yard line. He had no chance. Cody was coming. Chris Richard was coming. Deasy was there again. Deasy's been everywhere in the second half. The Trojans have done a good job the second half of adjusting to that option. It really hasn't hurt them that much, but the Huskies are going to continue to run it just to keep them off balance with it. As you see Williams come back into the game again. I don't think I'd take him off the field too much. You're not kidding. Great size, 6'4", 215. Second down. Deep drop screen. Hurst, got some room. 10, 5, touchdown Huskies! Touchdown Huskies. And now Anderson to try to make it a seven point Husky lead. Which he does. And he's left the Trojans five minutes, 35 seconds to try to get it back. Huskies by seven. 50 to 13. The Huskies are outscoring people in the final period so far this year. No exception today thus far. A cutoff first down. Doesn't get much. Let's go right down to the sideline. John Jackson, JJ, what do you got? Yeah, very well. The Washington fans, there's no surprise for them. In the second half, they outscored their opponents 54 to 16. And for Rick Neuheisel, he has, of his 20 wins, 15 are fourth quarter comebacks. They've outscored the Trojans 10 nothing in the fourth quarter. It's very tough for the Trojans to come back at this point. Eric? Rick says he puts them, this team puts them, themselves in that situation, and he'd rather not see that, but I think he likes the results pretty well. Palmer will throw on second down. Has time. Throws, and it is is almost intercepted. Floated that one out a little bit, and Omari Lowe is right there. Nice coverage by Omari Lowe on that time as he. Kareem Kelly tried to get the out route. Carson had it just a little bit behind him. But Omari's made a lot of big plays like that today. Palmer is yet to complete his first pass of the second half. And remember, he was perfect in the first half. And this is where big time quarterbacks have to step up and start making plays for their football team. Carson Palmer has great ability. This is where the leaders come out. Palmer 0 for 6 in the second half. Third down and nine, huge play. Out of the shotgun, Palmer looking for it all, throws deep, and I think he was out of bounds, he was. Colbert ran out of bounds and then came back in, so that wasn't gonna be allowed even if he caught the ball. And a Might flag, be past an appearance. flag is down. And it is. And it is interference. What a break that is for USC. Here's Colbert on Rock Alexander. Rock's trying to press him to the sideline. Both players are going at each other while the ball's in the air. I don't Pass know on that one. against the defense. 
15 yard previous broad automatic first down. That's a pretty touchy one. I don't know about that. It was pretty touchy. Both players were jockeying for position, but great advantage for the for the Trojans right now. They needed something to get to get some yardage going in their favor because they haven't been able to move the ball the last few times. 433 remaining in the game. There's the numbers on Palmer, but that 94 you see all put up in the first half. Been there a long time. Yes, it has. But they have it at the 40-yard line. Plenty of time. A cut on first down. About one, maybe two. Carruthers right in his face. And he's been there all day. Greg Carruthers is a very active football player. Again, making that play very close to the line of scrimmage. That shows you how much he's moving around that line of scrimmage. Very aggressive. Second down and eight. They cover the blitz. They don't get there. Palmer throws. It's caught by Kelly. And it's a foot race, and you're not going to catch Kareem Kelly. Great job by Carson Palmer standing in there under the heat. Delivers a nicely thrown football to Kareem Kelly, who's streaking down the field. You're not going to catch him, like you said, Barry. The Huskies sell the ranch. They bring everybody on this play. Palmer gets it up in the air just in time. Two players crossing in front of each other. I don't know which one that was intended for, but Kelly comes up with the catch and streaks to the end zone. And Palmer says, thank, thank you. Jesus. <laughs> what a good time for, a, uh, for your first completion of the second half, Barry. A nice, long touchdown pass. Put your team back into a tie ball game. This to tie, and we are tied at 24 with 347 remaining to be played. 347 left. We're tied now at 24 after the 58-yard touchdown pass from Carson Palmer to Kareem Kelly. These two teams, incidentally, played the last time back in 1995, 21-21. Now this very likely will not be a tie because the overtime rule now. Kickoff is going to go out of bounds. So the Huskies again will have good field position. They'll have it at the 35-yard line. Again, the Huskies brought all kinds of pressure. Wanda May, Davis to safety, Zach Tuiasa, Sobo, all these guys. But Carson stands in there and delivers a nicely thrown post pattern right over the shoulder of Kareem Kelly. And with 10 2 7 speed, you're not going to catch him from behind. And we still don't know who the intended receiver of that pass was. <laughs> and I'm not First sure. Carson is a does. free kick out of bounds against the kicking team. Ball be placed at the 35 yard line. Penalties accepted. Second penalty and the third penalties, they're dead ball penalties, personal fouls against the kicking team, dead ball, personal against the receiving team, those oh, penalties sir. canceled. Well, the Huskies have had excellent field position. They have good field position now with 342 remaining. Their last four starting points have been the 48, twice the 34, and now the 35. Here's Kareem Kelly and what he has done. He had a brilliant freshman career. I thought, frankly, that he, very much like his team, tailed off last year a little bit. 23 catches this year, I mean, and he is a big play guy, as you saw by that 58-yard catch. Really is a big play receiver, and he's off to a good start this year. I had a 93-yarder, I think, against Oregon earlier in the season. Here's a guy who uh, is the new Kareem Kelly, if you will, Reggie Williams, a freshman. He's been a difference maker today, as we said. Here's first down, first down, Bussin. Might have been a saving tackle. That'll be a first down. I think that was a touchdown saving tackle because there was a lot of green in front of William if he would have got away from Polamalu there. But Polamalu, very sure tackler, makes the big play. It's just a, just a delayed delayed draw right up the middle. Hurst finds a little seam and tries to get back to the outside, but Polamalu comes down and makes the nice sure tackle in the open field. So now the Huskies, I'm sure, will try to use the clock here, run this down. And try to get out of Dodge with a W. Give to Hurst, changes direction, and by some room, midfield of the 47-yard line. And he was another step away from breaking it. 
Again, that ability to go to the point of attack, see nothing there, and come back the other way. Willie Hurst does that as well as anybody I've seen this year in college football. That stretch play just hasn't seemed to work very well for the University of Washington today, but because of his ability to come back, he makes it a positive game. Second down and three, 247 left in the game. Nobody has left Husky Stadium, I'll tell you that. Give it to Hurst again, and Hurst going to be a little short of the first down, maybe a half yard short. Mike Pollard makes the tackle. And just to remind you, still to come, Iowa State against number four, Nebraska. Nebraska, speaking of long winning streaks at home, Nebraska's at 17 now. Willie Hurst, remember, did not play against California last week. They're going to measure to see if the Huskies made this first down. I don't believe they did. They're about an inch short. The Hurst missed last week's game with a hamstring injury, but has really come back full speed this week and has shown no signs of that hamstring giving him any problems. And this guy has done an excellent job, I think. Taylor Barton. Had a couple of botched snaps in the first half. No such problems in the second half. He's made big plays. And again, that's what Coach Neuheisel likes about him. He makes plays as a quarterback, and, and he never would hesitate to put him in because he knows he can make plays. They had a very, very tight competition, these two. Uh, Cody Pickett and, and him and Fruit and Frank Ball, excuse me, and it came right down to the end before they chose Cody as the starter. Third down, and about an inch, got to get this playoff, and now Weinsman comes in. I think SC has called a timeout here. Let's see. Timeout. USC, yeah. that's their first timeout of the half. 157 left, and uh, the Trojans, I don't think they really wanted to call that timeout. I think they had to because of some defensive adjustment that they needed to make. I think if they wanted to call it, they would have called it earlier. Looked like that timeout came from the sideline, too, that Pete Carroll must have saw something in his defensive front that he didn't like that he thought maybe the Huskies could take advantage of, and he, ma he made them call the timeout. Uh, Pete Carroll's team has lost some very close games, and clearly it leaves a mark. Here's what the coach had to say. They all have their own flavor to them, and, and uh, the, the one that was really the closest for us really to turn things was that Oregon game, and, and we really had, had it in our hands and couldn't hold the lead. Um, that one would be a significant, a significant game for us. It would position everything different going into the Stanford game, and, and, and uh, that's unfortunate that one got away. Uh, I, I think it would have changed our fortunes some, but, but unfortunately it didn't, and that's the way it goes. And now again, uh, while this has not been what you would put in the category of dramatic comeback, for the Huskies, and the game still was tied, so. Well, we thought it was going to come down right to the end of this ball game, and it's playing out that way. Short yardage, and Barton will get the first down. Now at 154, the clock will stop, at least while they move the chains. I don't believe the Huskies will be in a big rush here. The ideal situation for the Huskies, of course, is to Try to get a walk-off winner. They have two timeouts, and they're in their own territory, so they're in pretty good, I mean, they're in SC territory, so they're in pretty good shape. But you want to make sure you don't take too much time. The clock starts again now, 146, 145. First down. He's got time, and it's battled down at the line of scrimmage. Coming across quickly was Lonnie Ford. Barton listed at 6'2", and I have to say, he does not look 6'2". Of course, from where we're sitting, I don't think anybody looks 6'2". Will Chamberlain would have looked 6'2". Yeah, had a little play-action pass at his fullback in the flat. He's trying to hit a little corner route to Reggie Williams, but nice play to deflect that football away by number 25, Ronnie Ford. So it'll be second down and 10. The ball at the 43-yard line. 
have to get about another 15 yards at least for John Anderson to attempt a field goal. The throw and the catch by Elstrom at the 30. Elstrom down inside the 25 yard line. Elstrom has made big catches all day. Mr. Reliable, Todd Elstrom, who's just done that throughout his whole career here at the University of Washington, starting in his freshman year. Kind of an unsung guy. You just kind of, you never see what he's doing, and all of a sudden, boom, he comes up and makes a big play for you at the, at the right time. And here, this is as big a play as any in this ball game. Gets him close to field goal range. He's got three catches in the game. Two of them have moved the chains. One of them was a touchdown. First down at the 25-yard line. From here, it's a 42-yard field goal. Barton gives to Hurst. Hurst slips the first tackle. Gets to about the 22. Troy Polamalu makes the stop. Barry Tompkins, Warren Moon, John Jackson. The Trojans have called their second time out. They'll have one remaining. We're at Husky Stadium. The number 11 ranked Washington Huskies and the USC Trojans tied at 24. Taylor Barton, the backup quarterback to Cody Pickett, who came on when Pickett went down with a shoulder injury, has done more than an adequate job. He has now gotten his team down to the 22-yard line. From here, it is a 38-yard field goal try. There are 54 ticks of the clock remaining. A field goal here for the University of Washington is not a sure thing, as we've seen so far, not only today, but this season. Yeah, that's been a little rough. John Anderson, the kicker, is a guy with plenty of leg. I mean, he's got enough leg to kick long field goals. Just has been a little bit inaccurate. The center snaps have not been uh, perfect. And ironically, the ones he's missed this year have been the shorter field goal attempts. I think last week, 24 and 31 yards. This week, I think a 38-yarder he missed. There's a look at John. Uh, his mom and dad are here from Boca Raton. They come to every game. I started to tell you earlier that uh, Rich Alexis also went to the same high school in Boca Raton, and so did Charles Frederick. And Alexis and Anderson, very good friends, and Frederick and Alexis are very good friends, and somehow Rick Neuheisel wound up with all of them. Three great football players, and who knows, it could lead to many more down the stretch because that Florida area, as we all know, is full of great high school football players. 435 yards of total offense now for the Huskies. Second down, that's not the important thing. Ball at the 22. They're going to give it to Hurst again. And Hurst gets inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. Now they're just trying to keep it in the middle of the field and hope that John Anderson can win it for him. Trojans have used their last time out. Ball's going to be at the 18-yard line. 35-yard field goal from here. I think they'll take one more play, see if they can't maybe pick up a first down here. I'm sure they'd like to try to run this clock all the way down if they can. Rick Neuheisel, the guy whose uh, team is getting used to having come from behind wins. Well, we're excited about the fact that we found ways to come from behind and win. But I tend to spend my time thinking of how the heck we can keep from getting behind. <laughs> you know, uh, people want to pat you on the back and say, God, you're the comeback guys. We're the ones who put ourselves in a position to be behind. So we've got to try to continue to mature as a team, continue to develop as a team so that we can play more efficiently and more effectively early in the ball game, and hopefully not find ourselves in that role. And yet, they're in that role. They're in that role, and it's been a very closely played ball game. His team has hung in there. The Trojans have hung in there. And sometimes it comes down to this. It comes down to last second field goals. They've won games coming from behind, not so much at the last second. They've just come from behind and ended up winning the game, maybe going away. But today, they have a chance to maybe win this one right at, right at the end of the game. Now, they've got a third and three here. I'm sure they'd like to make a first down. But if they don't, they'll be able to use the to let, let the clock tick down to around 15 seconds or so. First dives to the 15. I don't know. Might have made it. I think he's going to be a little short. But I'm sure they'll let this clock wind down as far as they possibly can. And, Trying to keep that ball towards the middle of the field or to that left hash for a right-footed kicker. Give him a good angle at those, at those uprights. And he's going to be short, and they will let this uh, tick down now. And I'm sure they'll call a timeout at the last minute. 
25 second clock is yet to start. So they must not be even on it right now. They can just let it wind down to probably three seconds. Taylor Barton is already with the official. They're going to follow the official over and make sure they get it stopped. And now they do with three seconds remaining. That's their second time out of the half. And they will bring John Anderson on to try to win it. This will be about a 33 yarder. Another important fact here is USC has blocked two field goals this year, so they do a good job of blocking field goals. They, they got a score, I think, against Stanford off of a blocked field goal, and they have guys that can fly in off those corners and make these plays, so this is not a given. No, as a matter of fact, Richard almost got a hand on the one that Anderson missed a moment ago. And I'm sure that bothered him, and, and who knows? Psychologically, he could be thinking about that on this next kick, so we'll see what happens here. There's a lot of what is and could is and should is right here. As we said, you were talking earlier about uh, Zajac being the snapper, and that's not all he is now, so there's more to consider. They've had some problems in that arena. Pickett's got the bad shoulder. He pulled down a high snap a little bit earlier. He's the holder. A lot of variables working here for and against both teams. Zajac was just on the sideline taking a couple of last-minute snaps, and this is it. This to keep the Huskies undefeated. This to force the Trojans to go back home one up and four down. Just inside the 23-yard line, a 33-yard effort to win it. Snap, high snap, got it down. It's on its way. It is good. The Huskies are team played their hearts out today and they just have to be wondering in their minds what do we have to do to get a win we play hard every week we make big plays what is it going to take they didn't have the uh, penalties this week that hurt them in previous games but still they come up short again today it's a long ride home for those Trojans but they have a good football team they'll be back yeah I agree with you and you know last year you could say that about the Trojans I mean they had a lot of dog in them last year and I honestly I saw them quit in a couple of games there was no quit in the USC Trojans and Pete Carroll here and, and this is a team with a lot of talent you really have an idea that somewhere along the line all the stars are going to line right for them there's no question about it and you know, as long as they continue to play hard like this and believe in what Coach Pete Carroll's trying to get across to them, the philosophy he has on both sides of the football, I think this team will be okay because they have the talent, like you said, to be a good football team. It's just a matter of believing and doing what it takes to win. And they haven't done that in the last couple of years. And sometimes it takes a little while to find out what it takes to win a football game. Speaking of believing, uh, Rick Neuheisel believed in his, in his backup quarterback. And uh, Taylor Barton came on and didn't disappoint. He was 11 for 20 for 196 seven yards and a couple of touches and uh, boy that's what you want you would love for your backup quarterback to be able to come off the bench and play like that and Hurst comes off the bench 19 carries didn't play last year 19 carries 102 yards the dogs win it on a 33 yard field goal by John Anderson final score 27 24 